This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is on the Lagrangian and Eulerian points of view. We've spent a lot of time in the course already thinking about the point of view of the observer or of the person doing research or taking this course. And we've spent a lot of time on the coordinate system, the tangential coordinate system, rotating coordinate systems. We're now going to talk about another point of view, the Lagrangian and the Eulerian points of view. With the introduction of the Lagrangian and Eulerian points of view, we're starting to actually think about fluids, fluid fields, and the idea of we have a continuum that we are faced with special challenges when compared to, say, looking at a particle or an object in motion. We're going to have this idea of a parcel, and this parcel is going to be moving along some trajectory. As it moves along that trajectory, you're going to have it behaving according to the momentum equations. And we will be looking at, you know, what are the forces moving the parcel around? And in the atmosphere, the primary force that's going to generate motion, of course, is going to be the pressure gradient here. And then we're going to be dealing with the Coriolis forces and, of course, with regard to the vertical motion and in forces in the vertical will have gravity. And these will be the primary forces that we're concerned with. So a fluid, you would have to consider many trajectories if we were going to consider the continuum that is the fluid. We could take an approach where maybe we look at a few representative trajectories and try to discern the behavior of the fluid. But if we're going to look at the field as a whole, we have to essentially look at an infinite number of trajectories. We have to look at taking our idea of the parcel and the idealized parcel and as we turn that into a continuous equation, if we're going to continue to use parcels, we would have to use essentially an infinite number of parcels. If we were going to use this parcel approach, then each parcel would be represented by its own particular coordinate system. And if we were to look at our original parcel and its motion, then you would see that the parcel position is a function of its starting point, and the position vector is going to be changing with time. The Lagrangian point of view is the parcel trajectory point of view. It is the idea of what is the fluid doing following a parcel. You have an isolated parcel, and that fluid is moving around. It might be heating or cooling from radiative processes. But the parcel is moving around, and we are keeping an accounting of what's going on with that parcel. This is a very powerful way for developing theory. It's a very powerful way for visualizing fluid motion. And the history of each fluid parcel is known. Problems that you have is you need to keep track of the coordinate system for each parcel. You do not have an especially good way to account for interaction between parcels. And then what can we say about the part of the fluid that has no parcels? If you do this approach, what you'll find is that the parcels will tend to accumulate. In fact, go back to the movie on the rotating flow and think of the die in that movie. You can think of that die as parcels. And those parcels accumulated in lines and there were strong gradients between different colors of the dye. And then there were parts of the fluid that ended up essentially with no dye or, or hence none of the parcels that were originally given dye ended up being in that part of the fluid. Now I want to consider a fluid parcel moving along the trajectory. And instead of putting a coordinate system over here that's going to be following the parcel, or keeping in accounting for the parcel, what we're going to do is we're going to sit in one place and we're going to watch parcels go by. How would we quantify this? How would we start to think about 
turning this into a quantitative representation of the fluid. In this case, our coordinate system does not change. We keep track of information about the atmosphere at a number of usually regularly spaced points that are fixed relative to the Earth's surface. When I say we keep track of the information about the atmosphere, in this case, I mean from a dynamical or a theoretical perspective, what we're talking about here will be, if we're doing a model, we would have regularly spaced points. If we think about observing the Earth, we also use much the same idea, except the points may not be as regularly spaced, though you could imagine regularly spaced points in that case as being weather stations. However, satellites are observing where they can observe, for example. This idea of sitting in one place in space and taking observations or developing a model or trying to develop the theory and the analysis associated with fluid dynamics is something that is perhaps more intuitive to us as natural to the way we actually get things done. This leads to the Eulerian point of view where the observer sits at a point and watches the fluid go by. The benefits, it's useful for developing theory, just like the Lagrangian point of view, it's just a different perspective on the fluid and hence thinking of both the Eulerian and Lagrangian points of view together is often a way to minimally provide more insight or to check that you are representing the physics consistently. It requires consideration of only one coordinate system for all of the parcels. It's easy to represent interactions of parcels through surface forces. And when I say it's easy, we can do it from a mathematical or theoretical point of view. However, there are still massive challenges of whether the physics are in fact represented correctly. And that is especially the physics of mixing at the smallest scales. This uses a field approach. It looks at the fluid as a field. There will be no gaps or bundles of information in the fluid. It's homogeneous. The problems it's more difficult to keep track of parcel history. It's not as useful for applications such as pollutant dispersion. If you think about clouds, you can think about cloud as an object. You can think about all sorts of things in the atmosphere and problems that you would like to take on that are perhaps better represented by parcel methods. We have then two points of view, an Eulerian and a Lagrangian point of view, and each of these are useful, and neither of these are really universal. We're going to use them both, and in the situation of modeling, and in the situation of frequently problem solving, we will focus more on the Eulerian perspective. And that's the end of this introduction to the Lagrangian and Eulerian points of view.